You look like a man who enjoys a good brandy. Uh, do indeed, but I fear inebriation might cause me to lose myself in front of such fine viewership. Good God, man, I wasn't talking about getting blind drunk. This is meant for you to have a taste. Oh, well, alright. Taste? It shall be. That's pretty good. You get your own paw. nephew. I go. And this is How Dare You, where we defend movies that you people have been bashing for years that we loved. Like Showgirls. Not like that one. Like Spice World. Not like that one. Jaws. Not that one. No, but like the first one that we're going to How Dare You today, the masterpiece from Tom Green. Freddy got fingered. Hold on. Strong bestie. Strong bestie. Okay. Freddy got fingered. Which was a train wreck of a movie, but what's funny is how many people didn't realize it was supposed to be a train wreck of a movie. It's funny is how many people try to put a serious review on it. Right. Now who could... Put a serious review on this movie. There's Tom Green's Tom Fullery just giving a middle finger. It's like he didn't even really want to make a movie. They just said, hey, here's some money. Make a movie. He's like, fine. And the joke's on all of you. It wasn't supposed to be anything. If you read the plot lines of the movie, it says that a man reveals that his brother was fingered by his dad. But, like... There was no build up to that at all. It just was thrown out at some point, and then it was just kind of forgotten about, sort of, for the rest of the movie. So there really was no plot. There was Marissa Collin playing the best girlfriend a guy could ever ask for. Oh my gosh. How many times I've thought, man, I wish my wife would let me whack her in the knees with some bamboo. <laughs> I wish your wife was crippled too. But seriously, it lets you know that if a girl really cares about you, she doesn't want jewels. I don't think we could say it on this channel what she really wants. No, watch the movie, you'll figure it out. Yeah. We learned how you can get fired sending those figures into Helsinki when he clearly said Geneva! Geneva! I say Geneva! You hear Helsinki? It's 40 million Deutschmarks, Bob! We also learned that if your friend ever breaks their leg bone out, lick it. And get him a job. I mean an ambulance. And the best way to get a baby to wake up after it's been born, is swing it by the umbilical cord. Oh, wake up your baby, guys! Wakey, wakey, wakey! They really don't do that. Do it. No, they make it very clear when you have a baby, don't ever shake the baby. Even if they're really asking for it, don't shake the baby. Really? Don't ever have a baby. Oh, uh, since my parents used to shake me all the time. Makes it a, sense. It was a different time, Josh. Do you think there was any lasting effects? Not at all. <laughs> oh! That's not the baby shaking. That's the drugs. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah. We learned that you could have fun in any activity, even working at a cheese sandwich factory. I'm sexy! I'm a sexy boy! Ding dong! Ding dong! I want to chicken burgers. You're a disgrace to my family. We learned that there is such a thing as a cheese sandwich factory. Ding dong! Ding dong! We learned that that experience can get you a job at another place making cheese sandwiches. 
but as long as there's enough cheese on the sandwich. We can't have people complaining that there's not enough cheese in the cheese sandwiches now, can we? Because otherwise, it's just two pieces of bread, and that can't get out. I could lose all of this! And we wouldn't want that now, would we? Because then you could lose everything. You can put the cheese in your bum. And the final lesson we take from this is to encourage our mothers to pursue their dreams. If I were you, I'd go out, I'd have sex with strange men, I'd have sex with... Basketball players. In, in Greece. Greece. Men from Greece. I think the most important thing we learned from this movie is that Daddy would like some sausage. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some sausages? Daddy, would you like some sausage? Poor Thorn, man. <laughs> Poor Thorn, that was probably the best experience of his life. Bearing his ass and slapping it? Maybe. He was a serious, talented actor, and he got to just let loose for a movie. The only thing I will say I'm disappointed in is that it never led to that spin-off we were promised of the cartoon Zebras in America. Oh, that would have been so great. But for those of you who took this movie way too seriously, and therefore had to bash it because it wasn't Lawrence of Arabia, how dare you? Well, dare you indeed. Alright, so, uh, how many clips do you need? Clips? How many video clips do you need for the how dare you for sugar and spice? Clips? Oh, we don't need clips. It's kind of like playing Skyrim's Dawnguard DLC. You've got Dawnbreaker, Ariel's Bow with Elf Blessed Arrows, and any sun-based weapon, really. You don't really need them, but it's good to let, you know, let them know you have it. Okay. So, if you get that bit, you know the next movie are going to How Dare You. If you don't, then How Dare You. How Dare You. Because we're about to defend a movie that a lot of people love to talk about how stupid it is. And that movie is Sugar and Spice. It, it was pretty stupid, but delightfully so. Well, that's just the thing. It was supposed to be. Like, that's what gets me when people are like, oh, that movie was stupid. Well, it wasn't supposed to be a thought provoker. It was supposed to make you laugh. It was supposed to help you turn off the brain for a minute and just enjoy some hilarity. And it worked. I mean, for crying out loud, we had pregnant women dressed as Bettys robbing a bank branch. How much did they really get out of that? Seriously, it was a bank branch. Like, not a bank. It was like when you used to go into grocery stores and they'd have a little bank branch. That's what it was. It had James Marston in it. It did. After he had been Cyclops. Yeah, yeah, man! It had Mina Savari. Alexandra Holden. Do we know the other names? No, because... Eh, cares. Hey! The the main one that was pregnant, she was in that, that movie. She was in a lot of movies. Yeah, but she was in that one movie about which, which we call it. Yeah, that one. And that kid! She tried to save him from drowning. Sandlot. <laughs> How did you not get that from my description? God. I, if you haven't put that together, he's talking about the girl who played Wendy Peppercorn. The one who was always lotioning and oiling and lotioning and oiling. He couldn't take it anymore. She's the actual one that's pregnant. The other ones pretend to be pregnant later. You know what's really sad about this video? So we were too darn lazy to actually look it up. <laughs> <laughs> and we're actually out there at you! <laughs> <sighs> but how dare you! Seriously, even though we didn't want to look it up, it was funny. It had a girl obsessed with Conan O'Brien. Why couldn't she and Conan O'Brien actually get married in real life? Because he was already married. He needs to divorce his wife so we can make that movie a reality. Stalker Betty. It had... Wrong Side of the Tracks, Trailer Park Trash. And then it had the girl who played Cher in the television version of Clueless. As the prayer girl. Oh uh, yeah, that was her, huh? Who really liked to ride horses. And then it even had a girl who apparently smelled like bug spray. That was Alexander Holden. It's because she worked with it. She was on Friends as Ross's girlfriend for a while. That's true. Yeah, the one when he was dating the college student. Yeah, had that really funny episode, you remember? With Bruce Willis? You are a neat guy. <laughs> that was her. Are you talking about the girl from the hot chick? 
She was in the hot chick. Yeah, yeah, she was. Wait, was she? Yeah. Yeah. Her biggest claim to flame was playing Bruce Willis's daughter in Friends, who was dating Ross, while, while Bruce Willis was in the other room, psyching himself up on his date with Rachel. He's just a love machine. <laughs> what are we, how daring you again? Sugar and spice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But overall, it was a silly, ridiculous movie, but very funny. The concept of the movie was a young cheerleader girl gets pregnant by her boyfriend. Their parents both kick them out, so they have to basically continue graduating high school while trying to make it through. And they're struggling so much that she gets a job at a bank branch that she later decides to rob with her fellow cheerleader girls dressed as Bettys. I am cereal. How dare you? Our next, how dare you, another wacky, zany, but very funny comedy. A brother-sister love story. More ways than one. <laughs> Say it isn't so. Uh, this movie is starring Heather Graham. Chris Klein. Richard Jenkins. Orlando Jones. Sally Field. With a special appearance by Sarah Silverman. Mm, I love me some Sarah Silverman. And Suzanne Summers. That scene's harsh. Yeah. But let us point out real quick... This movie was released in mid-2001 and featured a rather Middle Eastern flavored gentleman in one scene going, 9-11! I call 9-11 on you! First, we're going to get canceled for me making that a uh, voice. Second, let's get the conspiracy theories rolling. <laughs> I don't think it was a conspiracy theory. I think it, was, I think it really was just a coincidence by 9-11. He thought somebody was doing something illegal, so he's saying he was going to call 911. No, I, he was warning. He was warning us. No, it was he just. Knew, he knew what was going down. It was just a joke because, you know, they're supposed to saying like he's foreign. He doesn't understand it's 911. It was an inside job. However, the movie was very funny, and the concept was even really, really funny. See, Chris Klein's character and Heather Graham's character meet, fall in love, start a relationship. The all the while, Chris Klein is looking for his birth parents because he was adopted. And turns out that Heather Graham's parents had given up a, a male child because they couldn't afford two children. And through a private detective, he finds out that Heather Graham's parents are also his parents. Therefore, they were brother and sister. You know what the Bible says about dealing with your sister? What? Don't! Then, though, they find out that the private detective was actually wrong. He wasn't the son that they had given up. Their actual son that they had given up came and met them. But now Sally Field's character is trying to keep him from getting back with Heather Graham because she wants her daughter to marry a rich guy. Is it wrong that I think that Sally Field was actually kind of kind of sexy playing white trash? Yes, it's very wrong. But, you know, I actually have tried to get my wife to watch this movie, but part of me is afraid to have her watch this movie because what, do, what am I going to do if she watches it and doesn't like it? You could kill her. Bestie. Pancakes? Pancakes. 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 But it also has Orlando... Jones in this movie playing One of his best roles. <laughs> definitely playing a half black, half Navajo, half Cherokee, half Apache, half Blackfoot, half whatever Native American tribe he decided to throw out in this scene. It's always half. <laughs> it's always half, yeah. Like if you're a math fanatic, that's gonna drive you nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but he plays the guy helping Chris Klein's character try to meet back up with Heather Graham to let, him, to let her know we're not brother and sister we can resume being in love and of course every time he tries shenanigans makes it worse you know he's got that plane with the banner I'm your I'm not your brother but the knot falls off I'm your brother and then the cow with his tries to punch it out of the way and gets his arms stuck up its butt but the good news is spoiler alert at the end of the movie, he does find her, he does let her know they're not related, and they resume their love story and get married, and he finds out that his high school crush, the woman 
that he admittedly became a man to Suzanne Summers was actually his birth mom. I would I would want to die a thousand times if that were me. <laughs> right. The sweet irony. <laughs> but like I said, very funny movie, very zany, and the main reason people bashed it was because it's so stupid and ridiculous. You can't bash a movie for being stupid and ridiculous when it was supposed to be stupid and ridiculous. What happened to this country's sense of humor? Well, seriously though, but to bash a movie for being stupid and ridiculous when it was supposed to be stupid and ridiculous would be like getting mad at Van Gogh's blue guitar player because there was so much blue in it. There was? I hate you. Oh. Me too. And how dare you. So that's all for How Dare You. Well, don't you have another one? No, no, we don't. Yeah, the one about the president. Oh, no, no. Well, we were going to do another one. Shut up! She's trying to trick us! I'm sorry. Hmm? Don't you ever touch me! <laughs> you smell like cabbage! So, if you put it together, we're doing a movie that everyone should love. We, can we say the title? I mean, it's talking about the former president of the United States. And he was pretty hard. And everybody liked him, but then he started to, you know, overstay his welcome. You know? Yeah. Got very rough. When we needed him to pull out, he didn't pull out in time. Nope. Nope. Just made a huge mess. How are we doing on the rating to this? <laughs> well, if the Indians are noticed, it'll be bad. But ladies and gentlemen, how dare you bash the funny, zany movie starring Michelle Williams and Kirsten Dunst. The movie, Dick. It had Spider-Man's girlfriend in it. <laughs> the movie was about two young girls who get an internship at the Oval Office under President Richard Nixon, Dick. Tricky Dick. Tricky Dick Nixon. And at first they love and admire him. One loves and admires him a little too much. But then they realize that, you know, Dick isn't as great as they thought he would be. So they sabotage him. And this movie insinuates that they're the reason he got caught in the Watergate scandal and he kicked leave. checkers. He did kick checkers. And he was a potty mouth. But he also broke that girl's heart and she loved him. How dare you break Michelle Williams' she heart. She loved him. In real life, we never learned who was actually Deep Throat. In this, we found out it was them. And we even found out why they didn't want to say who they were. Not to protect them, but it was too embarrassing. We found out that you can cut the American flag up as long as you're going to sew it back together. Or put it on a limber, nubile young body. By the way, this we're not being serious, so for all of you who take it seriously, go watch something else. This is not historically accurate. No, it's not. No, <laughs> not at all. But who, we all love Dick. Everybody you loves love Dick. Dick. I love Dick. I love Dick. And if you, and if you people who have actually taken a chance to give Dick a look, you would have loved Dick too! Let Dick inside! Okay, that one might have been too far. <laughs> Y'all are gay! We're talking about a movie! It's Stop my being homophobic! Sure, sure! Stop being homophobic. Y'all are gay. And get your mind out of the gutter. We're talking about a movie about Tricky Dick Nixon, okay? The former president of the United States. He was a bit <laughs> soft and hard at the same time. <laughs> It's a good thing this is YouTube and not a network, because I'm sure it would have gotten cancelled. <laughs> this film is as filled with these innuendos as we're giving them to you. Even at the end, <laughs> you know what? after Richard Nixon gets leaves the White House, when he's flying out, and we they see a banner that says, You suck, comma, dick. So to those of you <laughs> who couldn't enjoy a funny movie, how dare you? So there you, there have, you it. have it. <laughs> Jinx. This is kind of nice.
subscribe and other stuff. Hit the little bell to get notifications. Yeah, like. Doing. You know what? You should share too, just because. And a girl's telling you to do it this time, not us. So it ain't mansplaining. So we'll see you next time. Love ya.